Hi there! This video is a look into how I get ready for a solo exhibition at a coffee shop. I'd like to talk about how I make prints and labels and a bit of insight into the whole process of displaying artwork in public. I don't believe I'm an expert when it comes to the rules of the exhibition world, but I've learned from other artists in the community and online, did research, and made improvements with time. I think that having a setting like a local coffee shop is a bit more loose, and you can make up your own rules. Obviously, you should hold yourself to a certain standard in an official gallery. Each venue will be different based on what you're trying to accomplish. I'd say do your best and imagine how others interpret what you're presenting to them. Have purpose in each thing that you do. There are a few things you should work out in the exhibition site before you bring your artworks in. Fill out any paperwork they require and read through any rules and ask questions if you're unsure. Understand the set dates and deadlines, know when you need your artwork brought in and picked up. Understand selling specifics, are you responsible for selling your own artwork, or will the gallery space do that for you? Know the space, how many works you need to bring in. Do measurements of the space, and what hanging system you have to work with. It helps to give the gallery a spreadsheet of your artworks with a picture of the work, the name, the price, size, and a section for the potential buyer's contact information. Plan on attending an open night to interact with the public. The wall labels for each artwork can include a variety of things like your name, medium, and price. I chose to include information I found necessary. I'd recommend doing a Google search on how other people design them. I believe there are templates online and programs that facilitate this, but I made these on Photoshop. You can make a separate sheet to put up next to your works, which includes more information. This includes an artist bio, your social media platforms, your artwork statement, and more information pertaining to your show. I wanted to include my information on the back of my prints, so I designed a little homemade business card. It's probably more efficient to order your own pre-cut and printed business card, but these were cheap and easy to cut out myself. I size my prints on Photoshop to fit on an 11 by 17 inch page. I would then change the smaller side of the image to be 10 inches and then make the canvas size 11 inches on that side with a half inch wide border. This isn't necessary, but I feel it helps the print shop know exactly what I want and makes all the prints uniform. My prints are close to 11 by 14 inches, so I bought backing boards and clear protective bags in that size. The cheapest I found was through clearbags.com. If you have art size closer to 11 by 17, then you can get those. I photographed my works, edited them on Photoshop, and then got them printed at a local print shop. The paper I used is matte with a medium weight. I used a basic paper cutter to cut each print down to size, then I labeled and signed each print. With limited edition prints, you can include the number of prints, like 1 out of 20 or whatever amount of prints you choose to make, but since these are open edition prints, I just have the name of the work on the left and my signature on the right. I use a very sharp pencil, which is typical for labeling prints. I measured the backing board and used the emboss tool on the cutting board to create a line. I learned pretty quickly that the thickness of the board was too hard on the blade of the cutting board. It would have been nice to have one of those heavy-duty guillotine paper cutters, but scissors will just have to do. Next, I stuck the print, backing board, and my business card into the clear protector and then sealed it.
I wanted to make limited edition postcards of my spiritual figure studies. I went about it the same way as the cards and prints, cutting them out individually. And I labeled each with a number, title, and signature on the back. Here's everything all cut out and packaged properly. It took a lot of time, but I'm happy with how it turned out. And of course, there's cleaning up my mess. I participated in a live stream to talk about my art for the monthly art stroll in my town. This was like my opening night, but had to be virtual since things are still in lockdown. I took the footage from the stream and made it into a more cohesive video, my first art-related YouTube video. Um, so yeah, anyway, I didn't want to wing it and I made a script. <laughs> I made a game plan for how I wanted to set up my artworks and narrow down which pieces I wanted to display and got them ready to hang. I made sure they look clean, the works of the solo exhibition normally fit into a certain theme and exist as a cohesive body. If this show was a more official gallery showing, I would have given the show a specific title and artist statement, but since it's more of a casual coffee shop display, I just provided an artist bio this time. Something to keep in mind though. Everything is loaded up and ready to go. I use towels to prevent the works from bumping into each other. Adjustable wires on a rail and sliding hooks were already provided for me, which was quite helpful. Usually places that display artwork will have some form of a system. It's best to know beforehand what to prepare for. Previously, a venue I displayed at only provided a horizontal wire and I had to bring in my own S-hooks. You want the center of your artwork at eye level, ideally. You can get your art custom framed, which is quite expensive, or get standard sized frames. I like the look of a black mat and frame, so I modify them to my preference. It's best to follow gallery guidelines on how to install hanging hardware. They may require a specific system. And it's all up! I would stress giving yourself more time than you think you need. I literally finished a minute before I had to start the live stream. I'll link the video below I made from the live stream footage. I talk about my artwork and themes in detail, and I'm sure it's kind of boring, but I had so much fun putting everything together. I know I didn't cover everything in complete detail, but hopefully this overview was a help to someone, and I'm open to learn more ideas on how to better improve. Well, thanks so much for watching.